So I want to begin today by asking you all a question. Do you believe in demons? Do you believe in demons? Do you believe in demonic activity? Do you believe in demonic possession? Unclean spirits? Do you believe in these things that we hear about in the gospel accounts? Maybe you don't believe in demons, but my guess is that maybe you believe in evil, the presence of evil in the world. What about believing in an unclean spirit, even if you wouldn't call it by that name? Those things that take a hold of us, those things that tend to bind us, that lie to us and make us feel a little less than fully human that make us feel a little less than fully loved by God. In the gospel account that we heard today, an unclean spirit shows itself in an unexpected place, the synagogue, a house of worship of God. And this spirit seems to be possessing a man and it yells out at Jesus, what do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? And if you listen closely, that that spirit said, what do you want with us? Us, as if somehow acknowledging that even that spirit didn't fully inhabit that man. It was somehow still separate than the man that it inhabited. And Jesus tells this spirit to be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit violently convulsed the man, and then it it left him. And it's an odd story, I think, to think about, because it asks us to consider what we believe about evil and about demons and about whether we believe that God can actively dismiss them, that is, if we find that we believe in demons at all. We know from this gospel that Jesus was driven into the wilderness and then tempted by the devil for 40 days. So demon activity is nothing new to Jesus, even in a synagogue. But what do we do today with this gospel? What do we make of it? What do we, how do we feel about it? And what does it mean for you and me Today, Well, at the least, we still today are being invited into this apocalyptic text. We're not simply meant to be bystanders. We are meant to think about what Jesus is accomplishing with this unnamed man who is possessed by an unclean spirit. Even today, I think this text could be a guide for us. It can make us ask good questions like, where do I see evil in my own life? By what things do I feel bound? By what things do I feel helpless? And how can I fight these voices that lie to me, that tell me that I'm not good enough? And while I don't always know what to make of demonic possession in our world today, I do know that there are things that prove to be destructive to us. Every one of us has faced something, something that is destructive. Now it may be mental illness. It may be an addiction. It may be suicidal thoughts. It may be lust. It may be overeating. It may be anxiety or a compulsion. But whatever it is, these things attempt to take away life rather than give it. And in that way, even today, we still know what it means to be bound by something or possessed by something. It's not simply an epidemic that we find only in the Bible. It affects us still today. This gospel speaks, too, of the battles of good and evil in our world. Jesus came to announce a kingdom, the kingdom of God. And that kingdom of God came into the world to defeat evil. 
And then Jesus in a house of God in a synagogue was showing how how imminent, how close at hand and how real that kingdom was. This kingdom would defeat evil even now, not just in some distant heaven. This, this today was meant to show God's compassion for people now, here and now, in the midst of the daily struggles and temptations that they faced. God vanquishing evil. That is about God caring about people's lives their health and wholeness, their very being. Now take a look again at the simple words that are used in today's gospel by Jesus. Be silent and come out of him. Simple, but yet so profound. Jesus speaking the power of God into an unnamed man. Jesus telling that man and everyone at the synagogue that God doesn't want any of us to be bound by things that try to take away life. There is a divine promise in that. I can tell you that I still struggle with these things, and maybe you do too. Things that I feel bound to. Those little lies that sneak in and tell us that we're not enough. That make us compare ourselves to someone else. Things that make us feel ashamed and alone. Voices that won't let up. The voices that make us feel unworthy and hopeless. Or maybe it's something that you feel addicted to that you can't quite let go of. Maybe a fear that won't let go of you. Whatever it might be, if it's destructive, if it seems to diminish life instead of giving life, then we have a glimpse of what this gospel is all about today. We have a glimpse of those things that stand in opposition to God. And I would call any of these things demonic or unclean. I would call anything that binds us, anything that takes away hope, anything that makes us doubt God's love of us, I would call any of that, even today, I would still call it demonic. There was another distinct time in the Gospel of Mark that Jesus stood in opposition to evil, and it was also at the synagogue. Jesus found himself opposing not demons, not unclean spirits, but people, religious people. People at the temple selling doves and other sacrificial animals. People making exorbitant amounts of money off the poor. And Jesus, angered, flipped their tables and drove them out of the temple with a whip. Jesus saw what they were doing as equally evil. Anything that would stand in the way of finding God, anything that would get in the way of connecting with God was an evil that had to be silenced. Now, have you noticed that in the Bible, the ones who most see and recognize the power of Jesus are the demons? It's not people. It's not the Pharisees, it's not the religious elite. No, the demons, they are the ones who seem to be most aware of his power. They're the ones who seem to know his ability, his authority to drive them out. How ironic. The message in the gospel today is that God has power over these things. That God has power to silence them, to defeat them. And the point, I think, is to recognize that we cannot silence them on our own. We need divine help that comes from beyond us. Now, that divine help comes, I think, through many avenues. That divine help may come to you through therapy. 
It may come through medication. It may come from a loved one or a family member, someone speaking the love of God, the acceptance of God to you. But God uses all of those things to give life and to help us. God is always found in anything that gives life. And when evil, destructive things find us and bind themselves to us, we have a loving God who cannot abide with that. And the gospel today is about a loving God who cannot abide with anything that takes away life from us, that takes away hope, that takes away our ability to have abundant life found in a loving God. Because God is all about giving life. And God has compassion on people who desperately need to find and embody abundant life. God wants us to be free of all that would lie to us and tell us that we're somehow unworthy of God's unconditional love and acceptance. Life itself is a gift, and it's about knowing and believing that we have worth and that we are fully loved and known by God, by the God who made us. And may God cast out anything that would tell us otherwise. Amen.